For many people living in the more extreme northern latitudes, the wilderness holds a special attraction. And even in moderately populated communities, an increasing number of people can't resist the lure of even more exotic locations to pursue their lifestyle. But as more and more people strive to live in the last frontier, the pressures to maintain a balance in the environment also increase. Our lakes, rivers, and streams are the shining jewels in our northern crown. And that's exactly where people prefer to build their dream houses. Often, these locations are country residential lots without water or sewer services. And as rural development increases, the risk of groundwater, lake, and stream contamination from on-site sewage systems also increases. It's only been a few short decades since governments have passed environmental laws. As a result, the ways in which we dispose of and treat sewage have also changed. In the past, rural septic systems, which were not based on engineering principles, often failed, particularly in tight soils. Today, many factors go into the development and design of a good working rural septic system. The best approach to designing and installing a septic system involves using common sense, understanding some basic principles, including the need to treat waste properly and the ability to follow a few simple steps. But what is sewage? How does it pose a risk to public health? And why is in-ground sewage disposal preferred over other methods? Domestic sewage is made up of black water and gray water. Black water is the waste material which comes from toilets. Gray water is all other wastewater originating from showers, kitchen sinks, washing machines, and other similar sources. Both forms can contain significant numbers of disease-causing microorganisms. The list is exhaustive and reads like a who's who of epidemics. Risks to human health arise through direct and indirect contact with sewage. The cycle of disease represents how disease is spread and also how it can be prevented. In-ground systems break this cycle by removing most of the disease-causing microorganisms in the first 300 millimeters or one foot of unsaturated soil with almost complete removal accomplished within 0.6 to 1.2 meters or 2 to 4 feet from the soil absorption system bottom. This is a vital step in the process which protects groundwater. In-ground systems not only break the cycle of infection, but are also an important link in the creation of other natural cycles. Sewage effluent returns carbon and nitrogen to the soil, which can be used by plants. The carbon, nitrogen, and water cycles are nature's way of replenishing the environment. In this sense, respect for all of creation requires respect for the cycles of nature. Septic systems utilize nature's way so as to effectively treat and dispose of sewage and protect the health of humans and animals. Whether you're an experienced home builder, contractor, or a do-it-yourself person, this video is designed to give everyone involved a clear understanding of what it takes to design and install a septic system in climates north of the 60th parallel. This video is intended to be used along with the booklet entitled Septic Systems in the Yukon. We talked earlier of the risks of not treating waste properly, disease, epidemics, but there's also an economic factor to consider. A poorly designed and improperly maintained system will fail, and ultimately, you pay the cost. So the benefits of a properly built septic system are environmental as well as economic. Can you imagine having to rip this up to get at your system? What does the typical system look like, and how does it work? Conventional systems comprise a septic tank and a soil absorption system. While there may be many different shapes and sizes, all tanks are designed to do the same thing. That is, separate the solids from the liquids and produce a treated effluent suitable for discharge to the soil. A septic tank has one or more settling chambers and may be fitted with a siphon compartment. The sewage travels from the house through a solid pipe to the settling chamber, where the solids settle. The idea here is that solids settle, scum floats to the top, 
and only the relatively clear liquid is allowed to pass into the soil absorption system. In addition to separation of solids, treatment occurs from bacterial breakdown of the organic material. Liquid effluent from the settling chamber flows from the siphon compartment and is discharged to the soil absorption system in large flushes. The siphon process helps prevent freezing and allows the even distribution of the effluent throughout the system. This also reduces the chance of failure due to clogging and overloading. There is a misconception by many that the field is the only part of a system where sewage is treated. In fact, it's a two-part treatment process involving both the tank and the field. Each must be working properly to effectively treat the sewage. You don't need to know the specifics of the microbiology to appreciate how this works. What is important is that by understanding how a septic system works, you'll have a better idea what to look for if things go wrong. The size of your tank is determined according to the estimated number of bedrooms in your house. This chart shows tank size to bedroom ratio. The sizes suggested here are based on peak loads. The tank size does not include airspace or the siphon chamber. The second component of a septic system is the soil absorption system. Here, the discharge from the tank flows through a section of solid pipe called a header, which is connected to a perforated pipe system. This is the last stage before the process of filtering through the soil begins. There are three basic types of soil absorption systems that are used in the Yukon. Absorption beds, deep trenches, and wide trenches. Absorption beds use the bottom of the trench for absorption while the wide trench uses the bottom and the sides. A deep trench uses only the side walls for absorption. Whether through the side walls or the bottom, it's important to note that travel through 300 to 600 millimeters or one to two feet of unsaturated soil removes the sewage microorganisms and protects groundwater. A variety of factors will influence the type of system chosen. Every system consists of these basic components, drain rock, geotextile or filter cloth, perforated pipe, and sometimes filter sand beneath the drain rock. Sand is required where the percolation rate for the underlying soils is too fast. This means that the effluent moves too quickly for the microorganisms to be filtered out. As a result, they escape in the direction of the water table and may contaminate drinking water sources. While this video demonstrates the installation of a typical deep trench system, it's important to remember that the construction and operation of all beds and trenches are based on similar principles. Now that you have a basic idea of the components of a typical system and how they work, let's begin by selecting the proper location for a septic system. This should always be done before the house design and location is finalized. When measuring for a septic field, consider things such as setback distances to bodies of surface water, wells and property lines. All soil absorption systems must be at least 30 meters or 100 feet away from any well or body of water. Check for obvious unsatisfactory features such as slopes, rock outcrops, permafrost and high water tables. Also avoid areas where future traffic may occur. During a site investigation, try to anticipate future lot and building development and plan accordingly. If you have easy access to your lot, you should consider doing a percolation or perk test at this time. This is important for determining your soil conditions and estimating the ability of your soil to absorb liquid. This may help to decide the best location for the soil absorption system, since soil types might vary throughout the lot. Once you've determined your system location and setbacks, draw a lot layout diagram, showing how the septic system will be positioned on your lot. You'll need this for your permit application. Because the best time of the year to install your system is summer or early fall, it's a good idea to clear the area in early spring to allow the thawing process to begin. 
Avoid excavation of the site during spring runoff when the site may be saturated or wet. Keep in mind you may have to move a large volume of soil for your system. It may be a good idea to clear your area wider than necessary in order to have a place to deposit the excavated material. Investigating the soil consists of two stages, excavating the test pit and conducting the perk test. First, excavate a test pit with a backhoe to a depth of three meters or about 10 feet or more in the area where you're proposing to install the soil absorption system. The pit allows you to determine the soil profile. Your reading of the soil types, as well as the presence or absence and location of bedrock, permafrost and water table must be recorded on the permit application. The percolation rate, or perk rate, is the single most important piece of information used to size your system. Therefore, the perk test must be done properly. This test will determine how quickly the effluent will pass through the soil. Hard, tight soils, such as compact clay, may not allow the liquid from the septic tank to filter through and be treated while loose soils, such as gravel and sand, can often let the effluent filter through the ground too fast to be treated properly. The perk rate can be determined by building a simple percometer using the following materials. One 1500 millimeter length of rigid plastic pipe, 100 millimeters in diameter. One piece of 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter by 2.4 meter cedar wood strip, or one and a half to three millimeters diameter of stiff wire one plastic water bottle with watertight lid, hot glue gun, measuring tape, utility knife, and fine-tipped felt marker, and drill and 13 millimeter drill bits. Begin by drilling six rows of holes in the bottom 300 millimeters of the pipe. Using the utility knife, cut a small X dead center on the lid of the water bottle, and then insert the wood strip or wire into the X until it touches the bottom of the bottle. Hot glue the area where the wood enters the bottle lid and let it harden. Measure and mark five millimeter increments on the top one meter of the wood strip. That's it. You have your percometer. All you need at this point is a bit of clean gravel and some water. For the sake of convenience, you may wish to use the previously dug test pit to do your perk test. This is accomplished by digging a small bench off the pit from which you dig or bore a 150 millimeter or six inch diameter hole to the bottom of the proposed absorption bed or trench. The test hole must be soaked to simulate the ground conditions expected when your absorption bed is in operation. Some people construct a siphon system to constantly add water to the hole over a period of time. If the soils are tight, you may have to refill the hole many times over a long period to guarantee soaking of the surrounding soils. Keep adding water until the rate of drop appears uniform. After soaking the test hole, put about 50 millimeters of clean gravel in the bottom of the hole, and then insert the pipe into the hole with the perforations at the bottom. Slide the measuring stick down the pipe, and then fill the pipe with 300 millimeters, or 12 inches of water. Fill to 150 millimeters above the gravel, and then measure the drop in water level every 30 minutes. If you have sandy or fast percolating soils, measure how long it takes the water level to drop 25 millimeters or one inch and record the reading. Repeat this process until the rate of fall has stabilized and three consistent readings are obtained. Remember, if you're not installing your system for some time, you should fill in your test holes for safety reasons. If your soil conditions are not satisfactory for a soil absorption system because of permafrost, water table, bedrock, or tight clay soils, contact the Environmental Health Office with regard to other options which may be available. Remember, the responsibility for the system proposed, designed, and installed lies with the homeowner. The granting of a permit to install and use a system is not a warranty as to performance. <laughs> There are a few basic things you need to know when installing your system. Install only when soil conditions are suitable and ensure your trench bottoms are level. Do not compact the backfill soil. 
do not leave side walls of trenches smeared. This reduces the ability of the soil to absorb liquid. Both the bottom and the sides of the trench can be scarified with a rake. Use proper drain rock. Drain rock provides for dispersion of liquids, aeration, and protection of the pipes. Drain rock should be clean and measure between 20 to 65 millimeters or 3 quarters to 2 and a half inches in diameter. Ensure that fine material from the excavation does not get into the drain rock. Ensure your tank is watertight, level, oriented properly, and bedded in sand. Trenches must be dug across the slope of the land and the distance between the trenches not less than 3 meters or 10 feet or three times the drain rock depth, whichever is greater. There are a few basic specifications common to all systems. The amount of soil cover needed can vary depending on your location. Typical soil cover required in the southern Yukon is 1.2 meters or 4 feet without insulation. In some instances, this can be reduced by using 5 centimeters or 2 inches of rigid styrofoam to insulate the system before backfilling. There must be at least 1.2 meters or 4 feet of separation from the bottom of the drain rock to groundwater, permafrost, bedrock, or any other impervious layer. Before filling the trench with the required amount of drain rock, roughen up the sidewalls of the trench with a rake where the backhoe bucket has smeared the soil. Once you've excavated, leveled, and filled with drain rock, install your perforated pipe in the trench. Ensure the holes are located as shown, at approximately the 4 and 8 o'clock positions. For siphon-type tanks, it's important to keep your piping level as well. This can be done by shimming with bits of drain rock. Don't allow large, sharp rocks to come in contact with either the piping or the septic tank. While the perforated pipe must remain level, the solid pipe running from your house to the tank must be installed at a grade according to the plumbing code. Because the tank may settle after backfilling, it's necessary that rubber flex couplers be used before and after the inlet and outlet of the tank. A monitoring standpipe must be installed near the center of the absorption system to monitor for the presence of liquid in the drain rock. This is an indicator of system performance. Monitor pipes extend to the bottom of the absorption system and are not attached to any other pipes. Clean-out pipes are solid and must be installed at the corners of a bed or at the ends of runs on deep and wide trench systems. They extend 90 degrees from each end of the buried perforated pipes. Clean-out pipes are beneficial if you have to flush the lines. They should not be located under steps or in areas where a pump-out truck might have difficulty reaching. Both 4-inch monitor and clean-out pipes can provide oxygen to the soil absorption system during the summer months. These pipes extend 12 inches above ground and should be capped during winter to prevent heat loss and potential freezing of the system. Monitor and clean-out pipes also make it easy to locate the bed for future maintenance. The number of pipes needed is dependent on the size of your system. Gluing the joints of the perforated pipes together when assembling the system is not necessary, but it must be done on all solid pipes. Solid piping is located between your house and the tank, and from the tank to the first run of perforated pipe. In an absorption bed, this is called a header. Once you have the pipes and tank installed, put an additional 50 millimeters of drain rock over the pipe. Here, we've laid a section of half pipe over the perforated pipe to protect it while putting on the last layer of drain rock. Geotextile material is then put over the drain rock to keep the soils above from mixing with the drain rock below and clogging the system. Before backfilling, it's recommended to build an access hatch above your septic tank in case you need to do repairs on the tank later on. As well, pad and backfill the tank section with sand. When backfilling, you may lightly compact the soil. Too much compaction may damage the pipes and tank. Remember to take photos during all major stages of construction. These are required by the Environmental Health Office as part of the permitting process. Photos provide an excellent record of your system installation and can also be handy when selling your house. Photos need to be taken during excavation, drain rock in place, all piping in place including perforated pipe, headers, and monitoring pipes, geotextile in place, 
final backfill. Photos are also needed of the tank installation in place, during backfill, and at final stage. What you put into your septic system is as important as how you install it. To keep your system running at optimum performance and to ensure it lasts a long time, we need to look at both operation and maintenance. This includes proper use, which explains the wise day-to-day -day use of the system, and maintenance involving tasks to be undertaken on a regular schedule. The ability of the ground to absorb liquid is important for the operation of a good septic system. It's important that all surface runoff, including roof drainage, be diverted away from the septic system. Conservative use of water in the home will extend the normal life of your system. For example, install low water use fixtures such as low volume shower heads and low flush toilets. Keep a water jug in the refrigerator for those times you want a very cold glass of water. It saves running the tap. And spread the laundry days throughout the week. If you normally do six or seven loads every wash day, try doing one load every day. Proper use of a septic system is just a lot of plain common sense. Avoid the use of garbage disposal units. The bacteria in the tank will not easily digest the waste generated by these units. These place added demand for sludge storage space in the septic tank, thereby reducing retention time. This can result in the carryover of suspended solids, which can clog the system. Do not pour grease, solvents, or strong chemicals down the drain. This kills bacteria, which are essential for sewage treatment. Tank additives are not needed, and can actually create problems by causing solids to be carried into the absorption system. Items that do not readily decompose, such as diapers, tampons, or paper towels, must not be disposed of by flushing. In the winter, it's important to keep as much heat in the system as possible. Snow cover provides excellent insulation, so avoid disturbing this insulating layer. It may be a good idea to fence this area off. Regular maintenance of your system involves both the tank and the soil absorption system. The tank should be checked for sludge levels every year or two. It's also a good idea to check the condition of the baffles at the same time. It's recommended that the tank be pumped out every two years, or more often if necessary. If you plan to be away from your residence for an extended time during winter, there's a possibility that your system may freeze. It's recommended you have your tank pumped out before you leave. In review, let's look at some of the major points covered in this video. In-ground sewage disposal systems are the preferred method of treating sewage. A septic tank separates the solids from the liquids. Bacterial activity in the tank breaks down solids. Soil absorption systems can be absorption beds, deep trenches, or wide trenches. Select your septic system site before the house design and location is finalized. When measuring for a septic field, consider things such as setback distances to bodies of surface water, wells, and property lines. Determine your soil conditions and estimate the ability of your soil to absorb liquid by doing a soils investigation. Use proper drain rock. Ensure your tank is watertight, level, oriented properly, and bedded in sand. Ensure you have the required cover over your drain rock. Ensure you have the required separation between the bottom of the drain rock and both groundwater and bedrock. Install perforated pipes in trench with holes facing down. Use geotextile material to keep the soils above from mixing with the drain rock below and clogging the system. Take photos during all major stages on the installation. This is a requirement for the permit application process. Preventative maintenance, maintenance, and proper use will keep your septic system running at optimum performance. Do not allow any traffic on the system. Pump your tank out at least every two years. A sewage system which has been properly installed will, with proper care and maintenance, give you many years of service. If you have any questions regarding the installation of your septic system, please contact the Office of Environmental Health Services.